As the busy holiday travel season ramps up, the Federal Aviation Administration is launching a new program to help the overworked and understaffed air traffic controllers. Now, sources familiar with the announcement tell CNN the FAA is convening a special panel to review the impact and safety risks of on-the-job fatigue facing air traffic controllers. The decision comes after a series of close call incidents this year, while the National Transportation Safety Board said a FedEx flight came within 100 feet of hitting a departing Southwest Airlines flight in Austin back in February. In that case, the air traffic controller said he was in the middle of an overtime shift on a six-day work week. So here with us now, former FAA safety inspector and CNN safety analyst David Susi. Uh, so, David, what is this new panel going to be able to do to address this issue that impacts so many travelers? Well, I'm really encouraged by the fact they put this panel together because it's challenging the historically, uh, I would call it archaic way of saying, we're going to monitor your sleep and duty by being prescriptive about it and saying you can only have eight hours on, four hours off, whatever, and back and forth on these 24-hour shifts. That's how it's historically been done. But as you know, circadian rhythms, what's going on in your personal life, all of those come into play as far as fatigue and rest and how well rested you are. And look, I mean, I don't have to spell it out for you, but the stakes of what they do obviously is so huge to so many people. The Department of Transportation says the FAA is more than 3,000 air traffic controllers short at this point of the staffing that it needs. Why has it been so difficult to increase that workforce? Well, partly because the job is so difficult. It takes a yeah. very special mind. I was at the uh, academy in Oklahoma City uh, with a lot of these traffic controllers as they got washed out of the program. And a lot of them that you would think would be very capable of doing this, you, you actually have to think in the fourth dimension, not only what's going on at the moment, but what's going to happen. If these airplanes are going this fast and they're going that far, will they intersect? Will they collide? You would think all of that is automated and it is to some extent, but basically that goes on in your mind. It's hard to find someone that's ready and prepared to actually handle that type of mental acuity and uh, vigilance to to follow all that movement. Yeah, I mean, look, you talk about the, the fourth dimension, essentially. I, I went out to the aviation school at University of, of North Dakota, and I sat with them and learned how their air traffic controllers worked. And, and even there are times where if it's whiteout conditions or fog, they are essentially operating blind. They can't see visually uh, as the number of planes are actually coming in, and they're trying to manage those things. So couple that with the ability to actually recruit folks as well, should people be worried as they head out on flights this holiday season, or is this more about just trying to operate at an optimal level? Well, Omar, it's, it's important to remember just that we're in the absolute safest aviation system in the world. It's the safest mode of transportation, regardless of what we're doing. So when you talk about safety improvements, people get a little worried. They're like, well, why are we doing this? Why do we have to do this? And it doesn't mean that it's an unsafe system. This isn't a critically... It, critical issue that has to be addressed today. But in looking forward at what it could turn into, these indicators of these near misses and near collisions, you notice we're saying near miss and near collision, not collision and, uh, and not missed. <laughs> so uh, understand it is a safe system, but we are looking, always have, I've been with the FAA, I was with the FAA for 17 years and since then working in the areas and the safety and pro improvement programs, we're just trying to make things better, make, get that caliper tighter. And this chan transition from prescriptive into a performance-based system is where the key is here. I think yeah. we're going to get there. There's some new science out now. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to turn to another story quickly. The company Reliable Robotics said it recently flew a cargo plane over California without a single human uh, on board. The flight lasted a total of 12 minutes, flew about 50 miles. But the company says it is working with the FAA to certify the technology for commercial operations. Uh, what do you make of that? Do you see that as something that's scalable, really, and um, even to a point where it reaches the general population? Absolutely, I do. Uh, it's a change in an era of, of historical thought about how we fly. Uh, it changes. It's going to be. It's not going to be on commercial airplanes with passengers. I I don't think for at least another eight to ten years. However, cargo planes are very close. Within a couple of years, I fully expect to see uh, airplanes without pilots delivering packages. And I, I think that that's really close by. And ro uh, robotics is really reliable. Robotics has really made some advancements there that weren't considered before. So I'm excited about it. I think that's going to change a lot of how we deliver packages, at least in the short term. 
Well, uh, look, if a former FAA safety inspector is excited about it, then I feel like I can be excited uh, about it, too. But obviously, it would be a, uh, a whole new frontier uh, for travel here. David Susi, I got to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Omar. Have a wonderful day. You, too.